One of the most interesting aspects of modeling is creating the story behind your scenario, detailing for a particular time and place. The general setting will be down to your buildings and the trains you're running, but for the little details we want to get a bit more personal. And in this video I'll be making my own water slide transfers, which are perfect for adding that little bit of individuality. I'll be looking at both inkjet and laser printed decals, comparing the pros and cons of each and sharing some application tips and some techniques for a really professional finish. As my subject, I've chosen an Oxford die-cast Mark I transit van, and I'm going to apply a simple bit of Pater Practicus branding. The nice gloss finish and the smooth panels of the van make it ideal for the application of the decals, and the vintage fits right in with my mid-70s rail blue theme. And the first thing I need to do is just measure up the sides of my panels. I'm going to start by looking at laser printed decals and you must make sure that you get the right sort of paper and you can choose between white or clear depending on your application. Either would be fine in this case but I've gone for the clear and in each case the shiny side is the decal side. Now onto the design starting with a rectangle the size of my panels. I'm using Adobe InDesign but you may well be using something different so I won't dwell on the technicalities. The logo exists as a separate file and I start by placing that in my rectangle. Then I can add the type in my brand's typeface. I want the logo to be towards the front of the van on either side and I just want to show you a neat little trick for flipping them. First just reflect the whole thing as a group then you can unreflect each of the elements switching back the direction of the type and ranging to the side of the logo creating a nice pair of left and right hand sides. Of course, I only really need one pair, but I definitely want to have a few more spares, just in case something goes wrong. And I've got a whole sheet of A4, so I might as well try out some things with different sizes and different formats for some other projects in the future. And then print out, making sure I've got the glossy side up. Before I start the application, I just want to make sure my surface is 100% grease free, using some lighter fluid on a cotton bud. Then while that's drying, I can start cutting out my transfers. Quite a bit of my A4 sheet is made up of space fillers, which I can put to one side until I find a use for them. And I'm left with the transfers for my van and a few spares. I found that doing the final trim with scissors rather than a knife actually gives us a cleaner edge and not using a ruler on the sometimes delicate surface minimizes the risk of scratching. Before applying the transfers, I just want to make sure I'm completely happy with the size. And I actually think that the logos are a bit big. So I'm going to use the middle sized ones from the range of sizes I did to fill up my A4 sheet, trimming them on the inside of the black line as before. Now I can get on with application, starting with a shallow dish of lukewarm water, onto the surface of which I can float out my transfer and then patiently wait. I don't want to leave it so long that the backing sheet sinks to the bottom of the water, leaving the transfer floating, but long enough for it to slide easily when teased with the tip of a scalpel. Then the whole thing along with the backing sheet, can be transferred from the saucer edge and onto our van, where delicately the transfer can be slid off the backing sheet, which can then be discarded. And with that out of the way, the transfer can be edged into position and gently swabbed to dry with the tip of a cotton bud, tweaking the position if necessary, and then left to air dry completely. As I mentioned earlier, my van is ideal for transfers, with flat sides and not much raised detail. But if yours is not so benign, you can use a softening solution to help it conform to the contours of your surface. This can also be used to loosen up the transfer again should you need to move its position slightly. Now you may notice that I've damaged the decal very slightly, which I can touch up with a sharpie pen later, but it does go to show one of the drawbacks of laser printing. And instead of going straight onto the other side, I'm going to investigate the inkjet alternative and check out its pros and cons. One immediate advantage is the availability of the technology. Not everyone has access to a laser printer, but these days lots of us have an inkjet printer at home. And whilst the print quality can't rival an office laser printer, you're going to get pretty good results. You may just have to wait a bit longer, particularly at higher resolutions. Now I just want to demonstrate one of the obvious drawbacks. Inkjet printers use water-based inks, and you don't have to be Einstein to work out what's going to happen when we put that into a saucer of water. So we're going to need some sort of sealant over the surface of the decal, one that's tough enough to protect the ink, but still be invisible. 
and I'm using a clear acrylic lacquer, thinned down so it can be airbrushed, for a really fine coating. Now this may seem counterintuitive. Acrylic paint, after all, is water-based. But when dry, the acrylic polymers become water-resistant, so we'll protect our ink layer, but only when dry. So we're going to have to be super careful when we're building up the layers, as spraying too much in each pass may result in the ink bleeding a little, losing definition around the edge of the design. And we'll need to leave it to dry between coats, only gradually building up that protective layer. And while we're talking protective coating, now's a good time to seal in our laser print, guarding against further scratching. From now on, the process is exactly the same as for the laser transfers, trimming out with a pair of scissors, just inside the black line, and floating out into our saucer of water. Retrieving when ready, when we've got a little bit of movement between the transfer and the backing sheet, then we can move it over to our van. For the demonstration, I didn't have any clear inkjet paper, just the white, and obviously in this case that doesn't matter, but it's interesting to note the level of opacity should you want to put it on a darker background, which is actually pretty good, considering how thin the decal itself is. And exactly as before, once the decal's in place, we can dab it with our cotton bud, ensuring it's perfectly adhered. So what's the verdict? Here's the inkjet, more suited to domestic printing, and the finer, but more fragile laser. But ultimately, I think it's the palaver of the extra spraying for the inkjet that tips the balance in favour of the laser printed one. But both, with a little care, give really great results, making your models that little bit more special and a bit more personal to you. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you have, you'll hit that subscribe button for more modelling projects and all sorts of practical stuff.